Hi guys, this is Trevor Sullivan again, and I just wanted to welcome you to another video on an open source project that I recently put together and have been adding some new functions to over the last couple of days. Uh, it's brand new. It's called the YouTube module for PowerShell. And as the name implies, it allows you to perform certain management tasks against the YouTube API. The README is somewhat comprehensive here. There's actually a newer version that I just published here, so let me just do a quick refresh here. There's some different features that you have in this module, like searching for videos or channels based on some query term, just like you would do if you were to use the YouTube website to search for different terms. Also, if you want to get details about a YouTube video to see its duration or how many likes it has or how many comments it has, you can do that. You can also retrieve top-level comments from YouTube videos. At the moment, I don't believe I've built in the functionality just yet to allow you to retrieve child comments from a thread in YouTube in the YouTube API. Uh, but at the moment, you can go to a specific video ID and retrieve the top-level comments for that video. Uh, you just won't be able to see the replies as far as I know. Uh, you can also delete comments as well. Uh, so I think you can delete probably your own comments on other people's videos, as well as I think you can delete comments from other people that are on your videos if you're uploading to YouTube. Um, so that deletion of comment capability is in there. Uh, also, you can post a comment on a video if you'd like to. So if you want to, um, you know, spam out a link, not that I'm advocating doing that, uh, that would be unethical. But if that was what your objective was as a spammer, then you could certainly do that. Or uh, if there were a bunch of videos where you wanted to leave a nice comment on somebody's video saying, hey, you did a great job, you know, I'd like to see more content like that. You could uh, build some automation to basically save your comment text. You don't have to type it out every single time. And then you could just plug in a video ID and say, okay, go take this comment and plug it into this video with this ID. And that can save you a little bit of typing. Uh, so you can automate that type of task. Also, there are commands to subscribe or unsubscribe from YouTube channels. So you can search for channels right up here. And you can also search for videos. And then if you find a video that you like, you could find its channel ID and then subscribe to that. Or if you find a channel through the, the channel search capability, you could just subscribe to that channel ID as well. Uh, so I think that's most of the core functions that are available. There might be some things that I've missed here under this features section. Um, but this module is available on the PowerShell gallery. And it does require that you run it on a desktop environment unless you have some way of pre-populating the access token in the correct JSON format. I haven't really documented that yet, but it is theoretically possible to do that if you were able to get your access token on a desktop machine and then plug it into a CI system, for example, or some automation system. Uh, however, there's not currently support for refresh tokens, so your client-side OAuth token will only be good for uh, one hour, I believe. So it's a relatively short amount of time right now, but I do have to implement server-side OAuth uh, instead of client-side OAuth, which I did by total accident. I was looking at the YouTube API docs and I thought I was looking at the server-side OAuth uh, content, but it actually turned out to be the client-side OAuth documentation. And so I just kind of uh, messed that up a little bit. But it will require that you install the PowerShell Pode module. So this is an, an open source and very well supported community module from another uh, developer out there in the PowerShell open source community that allows you to create a web server. And that Pode module is what supports the OAuth capabilities for this module. And it allows you to uh, fire up your browser do the you know, redirect over to Google's uh, login servers. And then once you authenticate with your Google account, it redirects you back to this Pode endpoint. And it only spins up that Pode endpoint temporarily while you're actually going through the authentication process. And then it just tears it down. So that's really all it's being used for under the hood. And again, this is all open source. So you're welcome to look at the source uh, yourself. Uh, so it does mention that right here. It, re it relies on the Pode web server. Looks like I forgot to finish this sentence right here. Uh, there is a little bit of configuration that you'll need to do. So you'll actually have to go into the Google Cloud Console and subscribe to the YouTube Data V3 API. And then you'll need to create an OAuth client object for a web application and then add those credentials in here. I put a helper function in the module called set YouTube configuration to aid in the configuration of the module. So you don't have to go manually messing around with JSON files and stuff like that. And then once you've done that, you can go ahead and just call the grant YouTube auth command in order to uh, authenticate to the YouTube APIs with your Google account. 
Once you've authenticated, by the way, it does also support the uh, device flow. So if you have like a smart TV and it gives you like a six digit code or sometimes like an eight digit code, you can actually follow that auth flow as well. But I don't recommend using it because it gives you much more limited access to the APIs. You actually want to use the OAuth flow for this particular uh, scenario. Anyways, there's some usage documentation down here that kind of shows you the different commands, like how to search for YouTube videos, or once you have a video ID, as you can see from the list right here, you can just grab that once you've searched for a video. If you want to get details about one of those videos, you can just go ahead and plug it into the get YouTube video command as the ID parameter, and it'll tell you how many likes it has, how many comments it has, the uh, duration. The duration is currently in, um, I forget exactly what format this is, but it's some kind of like JavaScript format, I think. So I need to actually get that and then convert it into a uh, PowerShell datetime object or a .NET datetime object. But um, for the time being, that's kind of what it looks like. Um, you can also provide an array of inputs for IDs and a single API call can actually return multiple results, which is kind of a convenient thing. And then you can also get comments for a video. So if you want to read the comments on a video, but you don't want to fire up your browser, you can, you know, once again, just find a video ID that you want to look at the comments for. And then you can grab those comments using the get YouTube comment command right here. Uh, actually, it's sorry, it's get YouTube comment thread. I actually need to fix that because uh, I think I messed up the documentation there a little bit. But yeah, once you run that get YouTube comment thread command, it'll return the comment ID which you can use to delete a comment if you have access to do that. It'll show you when the comment was published. And if the comment was edited, if the user went back and changed the text of their comment, you'll see a different updated date there. Although I don't think this example actually has any with a different update date. Um, but it should, in theory, show the different updated date there. Uh, unless I have a bug in there that's just copying the same field here, <laughs> which is totally possible. Um, and then it also shows you how many replies each root, root level comment has. So like this comment right here has two replies. This one down here has one reply. Uh, you can also see how many likes a comment has. So if there's you know, really popular comments, you can find those. You can see the channel name of the commenter. And then of course you can actually see the text of the comments as well. Um, so these are just some sample comments from one of my videos. You can also delete YouTube comments and you can also post YouTube comments. And I don't think I have documentation for how to use these subscription commands, but as with anything in PowerShell, you can just use the PowerShell uh, exploratory commands like get command to find the subscription management commands in this module. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the setup for this module. So one of the first things that we'll want to do is just install the module from the PowerShell gallery. So it is available over at PowerShell Gallery. If you just search for YouTube, you should find it right here. And I just published the latest version, which is 0.3.4, just a few minutes before I started recording this video. Yep, just eight minutes ago right here, as you can see. And so you'll want to install that along with the Pode module. I did put in an error handler in the module file so that if you try to import it, but you don't have Pode available, then it will uh, throw an exception at import time. So it's kind of a reminder. So if you import this module, but you don't have Pode, it'll just you know kind of remind you that you need to install it. Um, that might not be terribly helpful if you are intentionally like copying your OAuth token over to a different server in order to pre kind of pre-populate it so you don't have to go through the OAuth flow, uh, in which case you wouldn't need the Pode module. But at the moment, I just haven't really added in that functionality. I guess I could just add in the check into the command the grant YouTube OAuth command and then just do the check inside of there to make sure that you have Pode installed before it actually tries to um, launch the Pode web server. So um, yeah, we'll basically just do an install module on that. So I'll head over to my uh, terminal here and I'll just do an install module command. Just copy that straight from the readme file. And then once those two modules are installed, I've, I've already got Pode on my system. I don't think that I installed YouTube through the PowerShell gallery though. So that should go ahead and grab it. And then once that is set up, the next thing you'll want to do is actually go to the uh, Google Cloud Console. So search for Google Cloud Console here and we'll head over there. Let me just re-authenticate here really quick. And I've got to verify my login here. Let me go ahead and do that. All right, now I'm logged in from my Android device as my second factor. 
And then inside of the Google Cloud Console here, you'll want to create a project. Uh, typically, there'll be a default project, and I, I don't think you can delete whatever the last project is, but you can just go ahead and hit New Project up here, say Create. And then once that project is created, you'll want to head over to the Marketplace here and search for the YouTube Data API, the YouTube Data API v3. And this is the API that you'll need to enable. Um, I've already got it enabled in my account here, but uh, if you don't have it enabled, then you want to go ahead and enable it and then come back to your project. The uh, navigation in Google Cloud is still a little bit foreign to me here. Um, so let's see, we want to go over to, sorry, APIs and services on the hamburger menu over here on the left. Go down to the credentials section where we can generate an OAuth client. And then you're going to want to create an OAuth web application just like what I have right here. So what we'll do is hit uh, create credentials. We'll say create an OAuth client ID. And we'll choose the web server, web application. Of course, there is documentation on how to do the TV and limited input devices flow. But again, I don't, I don't recommend going that direction. So I'll say um, test me, delete me just as a reminder. And then we'll go ahead and just hit create. And we also need to set up our redirect or, uh, URI as well. But um, what, we're, what we'll do for now is just copy our client ID and client secret. And then we probably need to go in here and set up our redirect URI. And I would just set this to HTTP localhost. I think it's port 8000 that it uses. Uh, and then I think it's auth complete, actually. So I think you need to configure that. And I think I need to add that to my documentation as well. So we'll hit save there. And then we'll come back to PowerShell here, and I'll say set YouTube configuration dash. And then we get our auto completion here. So we'll say client ID. So I'll go ahead and paste in my client ID and then my client secret. Actually, I think I have this reversed. I think the client secret is this one. So let me do client secret. I think the longer one is the client secret and the shorter one is the client ID. Could be wrong on that. As, anyways, so once you do that, then you can go ahead and just call grant YouTube OAuth. And that is going to search for a browser on your system. So in my case, it's, um, okay, it looks like I actually got that wrong. Let's go ahead and just close the browser there. And this background job is basically the Pod server running, running there. So let me do, let me reverse these again. Client ID, client secret, can never remember which one's which. All right, let's go ahead and run grant YouTube OAuth again. All right, now it's working. I just had those values reversed. So we'll go ahead and just log in to our system here, to our Gmail account, I mean, or Google account. And then I'll go ahead and verify my login here on my Android device. And then you'll want to choose your channel. So if you have multiple YouTube channels, You'll see those here. So I'm just going to log in as myself. And then you can see we get authentication complete. And that is at localhost 8000 auth complete. So yeah, that's the redirect URI that you need to plug into your OAuth config. And then once you have called that command, the Pod web server actually captures the uh, access key that's generated by the OAuth process and it stores it on your local file system. So at this point, I can start to simply call any, power, any PowerShell command in the module. So I'll call get, mod, or sorry, get command module YouTube. And as you can see, I've got a bunch of commands here that allow me to explore the YouTube APIs. So I could do find YouTube channel dash query Trevor Sullivan. And because it has a space, I'll put it in single quotes. And you can see there's a whole bunch of channels here with the name Trevor Sullivan. And I think some additional fields will show here. Uh, maybe not. I don't think, maybe I don't have the description fields there. I could always add that into the formatting later on. So that's how you can search for channels. If you want to search for videos, maybe you want to learn how to cook bacon. So um, we'll do find YouTube video dash query cook bacon. And that'll return by default just a list of 50 results. That's the max for a single API call that you can have. So you've got 50 results here. You could assign that to a variable like video list, for example, and then that'll, that variable will contain all of our data here. And so we've got the title here. We've got the publish date. We've got the video ID, the channel title and stuff like that. 
And so uh, that's kind of how we can search for videos. There is actually more data. So you could actually grab one of those videos and then just do like a convert to JSON on it. And there's actually some more child fields on those video objects. But um, by default, I just set up some PowerShell formatting files to show you some of the most common fields that you might want access to here. Um, so you can see the full description here if you need to spell that out. Uh, the channel ID is also available here. So if you find a video with a particular title and you want to find that channel ID and then subscribe to it, you can do that. So I'll actually just co copy this channel ID to my uh, clipboard here. And then we'll come back and do get command again. And now we could do like get YouTube channel, for example, if we wanted to get details for that channel and see how many subscribers they have and stuff like that. So I'll assign that to a variable called channel and then just spit it out here. And then you can see we've got uh, quite a few views here. So this is actually a pretty big channel. It's got 293,000 subscribers. I think they round that number, so it's not exact. And 654 videos. So they're pretty active. It was originally back on 2010 that they published their channel. And the channel title is Rockin' Robin Cooks. So um, that's kind of cool. And then if you wanted to subscribe to that channel, you could just call add YouTube subscription here. So if I do help add YouTube subscription, you know, it just says subscribe to a YouTube channel with a specified channel ID. And so of course the channel ID is the only parameter that we have here. So we'll say add YouTube subscription dash channel ID, and then just paste that channel ID in. And now we are subscribed to that channel. And this identifier here is actually the subscription identifier. See how it's kind of longer than like the channel IDs or the video IDs? So you can actually use this ID here to unsubscribe from a channel as well. So you can use the other command. Let's filter down to subscription related commands. So there's the remove subs uh, YouTube subscription command here. So if we call YouTube, remove YouTube subscription dash ID, and then just paste in that long ID of the subscription itself, you can see that that cleans up our subscription and we're no longer subscribed to it. All right, uh, what else can we do here really quickly? Uh, so we could say get YouTube comment, or, or actually, sorry, get YouTube comment thread. Actually, if I do try to call it get YouTube comment, that will throw an exception saying this is not implemented yet. In the future, I believe that's the one that will get uh, child comments from YouTube root level comments, uh, top level comments. But for now, we can just do get YouTube comment thread. And then we can specify a video ID. So the video ID that we had back here with that bacon recipe is right up here. So I'll go ahead and copy that. You could also copy it from right over here. I'd have to find the exact same video here. Uh, but anyways, I'll just copy it from right here. And then down here at our bottom, we'll just go ahead and paste that in. And the comment list. And we'll go ahead and spit out the variable comment list. And so you can see it spits out a whole bunch of comments here on that particular video. You can see when they were published and things like that. And then if I bump my font size down a little bit, you can see over here on the right hand side, we've got the text of the comments and we can see what the channel is that left the comment. So once you've got this data, just like with the video data where you've got likes and comment accounts and subscri subscriber counts for the channels and things like that, you could actually take this comment list and then just sort it and say, okay, I wanna find the most popular comment that has the most likes. Uh, so I could say comment list and then sort object dash property. And I actually need to figure out which child property we're looking at because there isn't actually a property called like count. It's actually buried down in there. And that's thanks to PowerShell's type formatting system. So if I do comment list, convert to JSON, and then take a look at the actual structure of the object here, I want to find object.snippet. Um, let's see, where is it? I'm not seeing the like count here. I'm not quite sure why. Oh, it's down here. Is it down here under replies? No. Um, oh, it's right under here. So here it is. So it's under snippet dot top level comment dot snippet dot like count. So as you can see, that's why I did that PowerShell formatting because it's quite a bit um, easier to work with. So I'll say comment list and then sort object and we might have to do a complex expression here because I don't think we can do, yeah, we can't specify child comments. So I'll we'll have to do like an expression, I think. Let's do expression equals ps item dot snippet dot top level comment dot snippet dot 
like count. I think that should work. Yep, that works. And so basically we're generating a new property to sort on by specifying an expression that points to a child property. So if you're not familiar with that, you can look at the help for PowerShell's sort object or select object. And there's a few different commands that support those complex expressions. But now we're actually able to sort by light count. And of course we could do the same thing, just add on the descending parameter. And now the most liked comment will appear at the top. So if you wanted to see the top five comments, you could do the sort and then pipe that into select object dash first five, and that'll show you the top five liked comments on a particular uh, video. Now we are getting a subset of comments here, and something that we can do, I think that I implemented on here, is if we call get YouTube comment thread, and then do dash raw, this is going to give you just the raw output without any um, special formatting type of stuff. Um, this is actually just the raw response that you get from the API. So I'll just go ahead and assign this to a variable like response. And what you'll see is that when you get a raw response, you can call this next page token. So response dot next page token. And you can pass this token into the API to actually get more pages. And you can see right here, uh, we've got 20 results right now. Um, I'm not sure if I can increase the max results for that particular API, but if I call get YouTube comment thread dash uh, do I have the page token? No, I guess I didn't implement the page token there yet. There are a couple of APIs though where I did actually implement the page token uh, parameter. So you can actually pass the page token in and just ask the API for the next set of comments. And then all you need to do in order to get the actual comments is to drill into the items property. So if I take a look at response.items, that will actually give me the comments themselves. And uh, so then I can start to actually explore those comment objects just like what I had right up here. Um, now it is formatted a little bit differently here. And I think I might have a bug in there. Oh, I could actually do format table and kind of format it, but I actually need to extract all those properties up to the root level. And that's where the formatting file really helps. So I think I might have a bug in there where I actually need to assign the correct PS type name, but um, I'll check that out later on. But yeah, it allows you to get um, a, a page token there. And uh, I think I can do that with the find command. So if I do find YouTube video and say find YouTube video like Trevor Sullivan, uh, I'll go ahead and do video results and then I'll do dash raw. And so now video results, instead of containing this massive table here, it actually contains the raw response and we have the next page token here. And I think, I think, yeah, so I have a page token parameter. And if I do video results dot next page token, I'll say video, video results two. So now I have a, a video results and video result two. And then, oh, I did force it to have a query parameter. So I'll just say Trevor Sullivan again. And let's take a look at video results two. So I've got the QB School, Canucks, Mad Bob Media. Okay, and let's do video results number one here, dot items. And I would need to drill into the snippet. So let's drill into the items dot snippet dot title. And I'm pretty sure that we have a totally different result set here because the very first video in this result set is actually one of my videos. And if you took a look at video result two, then the very first result here is actually from a totally different channel. So this, should, this is actually a different page of information. And then if we take a look at video results two, uh, we didn't do, use the raw parameter, so I lost the next page token there. But I could go ahead and just say dash raw. And then video result two should have its own next page token. And I could actually use the previous page token as well to go to the previous page and then use the next page token to continue iterating. And so now instead of video result dot next page token, I'll do video result two dot next page token and assign that to video result three. So now we have three different variables, each containing a page of results. So I'll just grab the first video from that list and take a look at the items. Actually, sorry, video result dot items, first element dot snippet. And let's see, we're back to here. I'm not quite sure why that happened because I actually used the next page token instead of the previous page token. 
I'm not, oh, I'm looking at video result. I need to look at video result three. There we go. Okay, so yeah, now we have a totally different first element here. So if I take a look at video result three first element versus video result two first element, totally different videos. And if I take a look at the first video in video result, that one's a totally different one as well. So you can see that these are all on different pages of data. So I've actually got in these three variables here, I've actually got 150 different videos that make up this result set. And then I could, you know, aggregate all of those results together and make one big variable or export that to a database or whatever. Uh, of course, don't do anything that's against the terms of service for the API, but, um, you know, you could do theoretically anything that you wanted to with that data once you've got it. Um, so that next page token is not implemented for everything. As we saw with the comment API, that's not quite there yet. Um, but it is there at least for the find videos and it might be there for find channels as well. So find YouTube channel dash query bacon uh, dash raw. And if we assign that to a variable here. So yeah, it looks like it is implemented here. So let's do channel next page token, or sorry, page token, and then channel dot next page token. And then I'll create a new variable here to store a separate result set and then do channel two. And let's see, let's take a look at the channel, the first item dot items zero dot snippet. That gives us a channel called bacon underscore. And then if we take a look at channel two variable, first item, that gives us a totally different result here. So yeah, so we're looking at two different pages of data here. We're looking at basically a total of a hundred items if we were to add these two arrays of results back together. So yeah, there's a lot of different stuff that you can do in here. Um, you can subscribe, you can comment. Um, actually, let's do a comment here really quick. Um, I'm gonna go over to YouTube and just search for, um, let's say Trevor, and we'll just find a video, oh, not him, Trevor Sullivan, and we'll find a video here. This is the video that I published yesterday on the Filebase APIs uh, using S3. So if I wanted to comment on this particular video, I could just find the video ID right up here and then come back to PowerShell and say new YouTube comment dash video ID. And I think it's also gonna require a channel ID. I'm actually gonna do find YouTube channel ever Sullivan PowerShell. Make sure I can find the channel ID. All right, there it is. Uh, I think that's mine. Pretty sure that's mine because I think I started that channel back in 06. Um, so we'll assume that it is. So then we'll do a new YouTube comment, channel ID. I'm gonna guess it's this one here. And then say dash text. Hey Trevor, create video. And it looks like it works. So let's head back over here to the browser. Just do a quick refresh a -roo. and yep, there's my comment. Hey, Trevor, great video. So now if I wanted to delete that comment as well, I could go ahead and grab the comment ID, which is right here. And if I didn't have that, if, I, if my screen was cleared, for example, I could just say get YouTube comment thread dash video ID and plug in my video ID. And that's gonna show me the comment ID here. So this is how I can manage the comment. So there's my comment that I just made, say remove YouTube comment dash ID, and then plug in the comment ID, which is much longer than video IDs. And that should kill off the comment. And then if we rerun get, it's now gone. And we can just verify that here over in the browser as well. Just do a quick refresh and yep, now we're back to zero comments. So anyways, uh, feel free to play around with the YouTube PowerShell module. Um, you know, it's not perfect. I mean, there's definitely flaws in it. There's missing functionality and things like that, but it does work pretty well from kind of what you can see I've shown you in this particular video. So anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you'd like to support my work, then you can head over to cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a subscription for our video training service where I've got lots of training on topics like Microsoft Azure and Amazon Web Services and PowerShell automation and Python automation and GitHub and GitHub Actions and all sorts of fun stuff. And I'm actually using GitHub Actions for this module right here in order to publish it out there. Um, but we've got a lot of cool training over here and we also offer a free account. So if we go to CBT Nuggets free, uh, there's actually just a link here to sign up for a free account and you can just sign up with your Google account. So if you'd like to support my work and continue to support open source projects, then uh, I would recommend supporting my employer so that they can in turn support me in my efforts to support you. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.